Mirai Nikki episodes 14 and 15. <laughs> so creepy. Why, why, where did she get these skulls? And she's like taped up pictures of her and Yukiteru getting married and bringing him food and just being a whack job. His eyes are glossed over. He's not responding. He's just like... Uh, and she's like, yay, he's so happy to be here with me! <laughs> so before things can get a little bit too inappropriate, um, Akise calls out to Yuno. And he's like, I checked out the bottom of that hole and I saw the corpses, and I saw that they were missing their skulls, so I figure you have them with you, don't you? I'm just curious, who was the third corpse? And she's angry, and he's like, if you don't let us go, then I'm gonna tell the police about the corpses. But then I guess she just decides to forget all about her classmates, and she speeds up the gas to kill them quicker. Wait, did Kosaka just become a diary owner? What? When I said that in my review, I was... It was a joke. <laughs> they weren't supposed to actually do it. So the diary gives them a hint that they have to uh, get up on their shoulders and crawl through the ventilation shaft. <laughs> And then Kosaka jumps down into the control room. So now Kosaka's having this big, dramatic, brilliant standoff with Yuno. And she's like, fine, I'm gonna give you one of the two keys. One is for Yukiteru's handcuffs, and the other is for the control room to get your friends out. And Yukiteru's like, oh, this isn't gonna end well. So Kosaka does get the door open, thankfully. So he rescued, um... Akise and Mao. Oh! But then Yuno shoots him with a crossbow in the leg. So the thing with Kosaka's diary is that it only predicts his successes and not his failures. Um, so he didn't see that um, he would get shot in the leg. But then Yukiteru gets up, he got the key first, and let himself out and smacked Yuno in the face. So they're all leaving together and Yuno's like, Yuki, don't leave me! And he finally just like tells her, Get lost. I'm done with you. And he leaves with the rest of his friends. Now there are like diary apprentices. There are these random people talking about the diaries like they know what's going on. I'm very confused right now. So everyone's driving back with that cop, Nakajima. And as they're going by, they spot three people in a convertible. And um, it's the three apprentice diary owners. And now the after the credits scene is um, a little story about how the tiny god person met um, Kosaka. And so he wishes for the ability to predict the future. And she's like, you have to go undergo a trial first. And in order to get it, the, the trial is that he has to jump off of this cliff. Um, and then he wakes up back in the hot spring. Okay. Um, I was expecting a lot more from that episode. I'm a little disappointed, and I'm also kind of like, I don't want apprentice diary owners. I don't think we need that, but, um, let's watch episode 15. So I think what just happened is that Eighth has the ability to create more diary owners, to create apprentice diary owners. That's who Eighth is. Oh, and now it's a new upwitting theme song. They're showing all of the diary owners that have already been killed. Defeated. <laughs> okay, so we figure out what is going on with the Eighth diary owner. He's not actually creating more diary owners. He just, he has the server of all the blogs, so he, like, sends out the messages. I've been calling the cop Nakajima this whole time, haven't I? His name is Nishijima. Whoops! <laughs> Yukiteru's all like, what do I do? I don't know how to fight on my own, but I don't want to rely on Yuno anymore because she's crazy. And all of his friends are like, we'll help you, Yukiteru, no worries. So he's in his house knowing that the diary owners are going to show up eventually to try to kill him. And then he hears movement downstairs and he's like, I'll go check it out. Oh, and it's mom, that's good. <laughs> it's like... Yukiteru's all like, oh, this is the first time I've had a meal with my mom since that time Yuno was here. But seriously, are you telling me mom didn't take a day off from work after her son got arrested and shot someone and was, like, a hostage? <laughs> are you telling me that didn't happen? That's cool. 
Oh, and they try to explain it away right now by having her say, You can tell me about it when you're ready. And then Mom reveals that Yuno came over and cooked and then left. And, um... Yukiteru's freaked out. She was in the house and he had no idea. So Yukiteru asks Kosaka if he can hide out at his house for now. <laughs> and Kosaka has a giant house with a giant property, I guess. So it's perfect for their plan? Okay, so here's the plan. There's a cell phone tower on the property and they can turn off the cell phone tower so the apprentice diary owners can't get information from Eighth. Then the power goes out mysteriously and they try to turn off the cell phone tower but it doesn't work because someone put the power out. Oh, you know cut the power. She wants to be the only one who gets to save Yukiteru. So Kise is like, you have to distract Yuno as we go turn off the tower manually. So he and Kosaka run off to turn off the tower. So she gets up there and they, they tie her up so that she can't attack them. <laughs> and then the diary owners, the apprentice diary owners, break in. And they knock Nishijima out pretty easily, because he's fairly useless. <laughs> okay, so this like freakish lady with a gigantic head is apparently eighth. And she's the one controlling it all. I think. So Yukiteru and Yuno escape into this room upstairs, <laughs> leaving Hinata and Mao behind. And she's like, untie me so I can protect you, Yuki. And he's like, no way! But that's when the diary owners break in, and Akise calls up just then and says that they're shutting off the tower, so now the diary owners can't get any information. Oh, here's a twist. These are not the apprentice diary owners. These are two people named Seventh. They're both the Seventh. And, um, they weren't, <laughs> they weren't apprentice diary owners. They were real diary owners. Okay. And one has a pompadour. And they have the exchange diaries, I guess. Whatever that means. And <laughs> Yukiteru's freaking out. He's like, do I, do I let Yuno go? What, <laughs> is, is it, what, what will make my situation better? And he, he eventually cuts her free. So the exchange diaries monitor each other. So apparently the battle is between couples. Whichever couple loves each other more wins. <laughs> so the two sevenths run out, but um, Hinata and Mao are missing. They set the entire house on fire. <laughs> but they, it's just, this is Kosaka's house, this poor kid. Um, but they rescued Hinata and Mao, which is nice. Then the fight continues. Uh, Yuno fights against the lady seventh and Yukiteru fights against the male seventh, and Yuno is about to stab the lady, but then the guy jumps in front. And the guy is angry at Yukiteru for not protecting Yuno. And Yukiteru is like, I know I suck! I'm not trying to say I don't! Jeez! <laughs> so then they throw Yukiteru off the balcony, but then it's like, one day later, everyone's in the hospital, and Nishijima is looking like a terrible, terrible cop once again because everyone's injured horribly. <laughs> the two sevenths stole their diaries. And then Minine Mine, Mine, Mine is back, and then the episode ends. There's no scene after the credits of that one, but inexplicably the sevenths decided not to kill Yuno and Yukiteru and just take their diaries instead. Okay. I was not super impressed by those episodes. I felt like the build-up so the finale was really good, but then the finale itself of episode 13 was kind of meh. I'm hoping it gets better. I'm rooting for this show. I don't want it to be bad. I want it to be good. Especially since it is the show that supposedly gets a lot of flack. Next up, I'm going to review the next, I think, nine episodes? Episodes 16 through 24. And the final video for Mirai Nikki will be a, uh, a watching of the final two episodes. So I'll see you next time for that. Bye!